The tip this week is about SSKs or left slanting decreases. And when you see the instructions for SSKs, they tell you to slip each stitch independently, place them back on the needle, and then knit them through the back. Okay? And you can see that the top stitch is slanting towards the left. Now another way that you can see this done is I slip the stitch as if to knit, I slip the stitch as if to knit, I orient the stitches back on my needle, and since this needle is already through the back of those, I don't need to take it out, I can just go ahead and make the decrease. So either way of those uh, methods works. Now the problem with SSKs is that they don't really match the knit two togethers, and the reason that they don't is because these stitches are slipped. And when you slip a stitch, and when and you insert your needle, you distort it, you stretch it out. So the SSKs will be larger than the knit two togethers. And in the blog I'll have some photos showing these um, decreases and you can compare them. I'm using such large uh, needles here, you really aren't going to be able to tell it. Now one way that you can make it look much better is to barely use your needle tips, just the tips of the needle tips when you slip them and when you work the decrease. And what that's going to do is it's going to stretch those stitches out less and therefore they're not going to be as large. Now another way that you will see some books tell you to do this, and it's fine to do this for your own projects but don't do it for the master knitting program, is to slip just the first stitch and reorient it and then knit those two stitches through the back loop. What that does, and this is kind of hard to see, is it twists the second stitch at the base. And in the master's program and in the basics class, we don't want to see twisted stitches because what they do is they can, they do have a different gauge and they can alter the appearance of some pieces. You can see here, I could definitely see that that stitch is twisted. So do that in your own projects, uh, but don't do it for the master's program. And by the way, when you are slipping a stitch for a decrease, always slip it knitwise. Always, always, always. If you don't, it'll be twisted. And I'm going to talk about twisted decreases um, in the next blog, I believe, and why that's not a great idea. Now, another way that you can <clears throat> um, have a smaller decrease is, if you think about it logically, when you are shifting those stitches around, slipping them to reorient them on the needle, what you are actually doing is you are putting them in a, uh, you're changing the stitch mount. And another way that you can change a stitch mount is by, whoops, that one got dropped. Um, another way that you can change the mount of a stitch is on the previous row, work it in the opposite direction. So for example, for a purl stitch, normally I'm going to be bringing the yarn over, but instead I'm going to bring the yarn under, and I'm not going to pull too tight because I don't want to strangle that stitch. Now these two stitches that I've worked in the opposite direction are going to be the stitches that I decrease. And if you use this method, um, it uh, requires that you think ahead about what you're doing on the previous row. So now I'm to that location where I'm going to work those stitches, and I work to where the decrease is, and if I notice those stitches are already oriented properly, it is as if I have twisted them. So I can just knit them through the back, and this de decrease will be smaller than the others. Now the trick to that is, is you don't want to pull too tight when you are wrapping those stitches in the wrong direction, or it's really itty bitty teeny weeny. Now another thing that you can do is when you have decreased stitches, and if that top stitch is too large, you can use a tapestry needle or another knitting needle to manipulate the yarn into the stitches around it. And on the uh, example I have in the um, blog, I will show the difference that that can make.